audio test with the Boya mic. What in the f What the f are you, you mug? What the? Oi! Fucking numbskull f with f dumb f That's road rage. <laughs> 10 out of 10. In my defense, that guy did run a red light. On the surface, this may seem like a simple story about a thermal camera and why I chose one to study Antarctica. You see, the truth is, it's a little bit more than that. This is a David and Goliath story. The government getting in the way of progress. Daniel Jones versus the United States. Here at the African Robotics Unit, we have an excellent thermal camera. The Fleur Boson 640. I've got to extract it from this monstrosity because it's been used to take pictures of rats. Interesting. There she is. The Fleur Boson 640. $4,000 or 80,000 rand. I thought that was a lot of money when I first started working with this camera, but I've come to realize that for how good quality this is, it's actually pretty reasonable. This camera is used by some of the top research institutes in the world. I'm talking NASA. Out in space where it's a whole lot colder than Antarctica, these guys. I'm talking Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, one of the top marine research institutes in the world. These guys, once again. In fact, when I was on the Ocean Explorer, the engineers let me go and snoop around all their hardware and what do you know six seven eight of these guys for the remainder of this video we will be referring to this thermal camera as Bob B-A-A-B -A -A for no particular reason given this information I was pretty confident that Bob would be a perfectly suitable camera for my sensor suite still I had to do some sanity checks. I ran a series of experiments where I put blocks of dry ice on a tray and moved it further and further away up to about 60 meters to see if I could still clearly see the outline of the ice. And I could, no problem. Also, I fact checked my temperature readings using one of these COVID-19 laser blaster guns 3000 and the results were pretty good. When I first filmed this, I realized at no point did I ever explain why I want a thermal camera. Two reasons. One, temperature information is important in terms of predicting how ice will behave in the future. And two, because of the distinct temperature difference between the ocean and the ice, it's a really useful tool for segmenting the two. So there was just one teensy little problem. The version of the camera we bought didn't come with the attachment that allows me to hardware trigger the capturing of images. When I say hardware trigger, I mean send a literal electrical pulse straight to the camera that tells it capture an image now. This is absolutely critical to the functioning of my sensor suite as a whole because it makes sure all the various sensors are capturing data at the precise exact moment in time. If that's not the case, it's gonna result in a lot of errors. Fortunately, that's not too much of a problem. Just open your browser, open up the new tab, and type in Fleur Boson VPC Sync. And you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. It's just a PCB. And all this does is swap out this little back plate of the Fleur Boson with a different one. The difference is, we get extra cables that allow us to send that hardware trigger. $129, not too bad. Looking good, looking good. Uh-oh. You see, thermal cameras are good at many things. When it comes to a good old game of what object would hurt the most if I put it in my mouth, thermal cameras are unrivaled. They are also extremely good at killing people. Let me explain. All objects radiate heat. Thermal radiation. And that's just a fancy word for light. So if we refer back to our diagram from the LiDAR episode where this is short wavelengths and as we go this direction, the wavelengths get longer. We can see that stereo cameras use this wavelength. 
pretty much the same wavelength that we use. LiDAR over here and thermal cameras over here. This wavelength over here is the wavelength of most thermal radiation. So if you think about it, a thermal camera is just a normal camera, just looking at a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And this opens up a whole new world of possibility. You can debug PCBs by seeing which component is overheating. It can act as an early warning system in a factory by telling you that a piece of equipment is really freaking hot and about to blow up. Or you can see how hot this cup of tea is. Or how cold this frozen water bottle is. Or how terrible my circulation in my fingers is. It can see at night. If you were to point it out in the open, you'd be able to spot animals super easily because they stand out like lights. You can check the vital signs of an organism to see how healthy it is at long ranges. Remember how I said the military often likes to get involved with these sorts of things and it's never fun when they do? Yeah. Put it this way. If you were trying to build a super killer drone designed to explode my brains out, would you use this camera or this camera? I think you get my point. Now, almost all the high quality commercially available thermal cameras come from the United States, but because of how easily they can be used to murder people, they like to keep close tabs on who they sell it to. If we dive into the export conditions on their website, we see three distinct lists. Australia, United Kingdom, Canada. These countries can order a thermal camera, no questions asked. It will be delivered. But if we scroll down, we see another list. Terrorist supporting countries. Cuba, Iran, Libya, North Korea, so on. Under no circumstances will they ever deliver a thermal camera to these countries. But there seems to be an in-between. And on that in-between list, is South Africa. And from how I understood it, it seemed like countries on this in-between list would have to jump through a couple extra administrative loops, submit some paperwork, maybe get a license. I didn't want to order a $200 component just to find out that I didn't have the right paperwork and it wouldn't be delivered. So I thought, let me phone them and just clarify things. But there was definitely some level of miscommunication in the phone call because I explained to them what I would be doing with the cameras. Huh. But I think what they heard was, they will remember the name. Daniel Jones. <laughs> I mean, I asked them, hey, what hoops do I have to jump through? And the lady literally just said no and put down the phone. So we gave up. We tried looking for different cameras. None of them quite had the specs we needed. And if they did, they couldn't be hardware triggered. So that kind of defeated the point. America defeated me. So we decided just we'll put it on the back burner one day we'll find a way to just order this little PCB board. Till then, we're gonna focus on other parts of the project. It's now someone else's problem. Some future master student is gonna have to go to battle with America. And to you, I say good luck. It's no longer my problem. So that's it for the sensor selection process in general. Stereo camera, thermal camera, and a LiDAR. Now we're gonna focus on fusing those three sensors together and enclosing them in a nice Antarctic proof enclosure. Later, baby. Mwah. Oh, you're down. Oh, this was a terribly thought out plan. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I've soiled my britches.